thing about friends, you know, talking about Jesus being our friends, is sometimes friends will lead you into places that you don't really want to go. Jesus kind of does that sometimes. At the beginning of Luke's gospel, and you can turn there with me if you want to, you don't really have to, but uh, if you just kind of do a, a brief survey at the beginning of Luke's gospel, starting in chapter 4, you see that Jesus spent a lot of time with uh, the undesirable people of society. It starts off, you know, he goes to the house of Simon Peter, or Simon's mother, who is sick, in chapter 4, beginning in verse 38. And then, right after that, uh, all the people bring him all the sick around to heal. And so he's just surrounded by sick people. And then, you have him dealing with the man with leprosy. In chapter 5, beginning in verse 12, leprosy is kind of a nasty skin disease, you know, that, that people don't want to touch, and don't want to be around. And then he's got the paralytic in chapter 5, verse 17. And I want you to just think about, you know, how many of you don't even like going to the hospital because there's sick people at the hospital? You don't like being around sick people talking to a friend of mine the other day and, and made a comment about you know somebody vomiting and he said oh that would have done it for me <laughs> he said man I, I just can't even be around vomit I can't smell it I can't see it I can't hear it he said because as soon as I do I'm going to you know and yet Jesus was constantly around sick people we don't know what kind of sickness there was but he was around sick people the, the, the man with the leprosy I uh, watched a movie, uh, Braveheart, one of my all-time favorite movies, and there's a guy on there with leprosy. And you see him, and it, literally his skin is falling off his face and stuff. And how many of you, when you see people like that, you just want to go up and just say, how you doing and touch him? <laughs> Most of us don't. But Jesus reached out and touched him. Uh, he was also surrounded by those who were opposed to him. Chapter 5, verse 21. He rubbed elbows with those of low esteem. Chapter 5, verse 27, the tax collector. Uh, the people that the rest of society said, you know, we don't have anything to do with them, stay away from them. And Jesus had something to do with them. And again, those who were against him in chapter 5, verse 33, through chapter 6, verse 11. He was always around people that we don't want to be around. People who are sick, people who are the outcasts of society, people that nobody in society likes, and people who are against us. You know, for the most part, most of us kind of like to stay around people that we like, right? People who are kind of like us and everything else, but that wasn't Jesus. Now, keep in mind, he left heaven to come and live among the outcasts of society. I mean, he came to live amongst everybody, but really he spent a lot of his time amongst those that the rest of society turned and, and rejected. But not only did he spend time with them and live among them, but he treated them with respect and with compassion and with a sense of dignity. Now, right after those first few chapters where we have all these examples of him doing this, we have the story of the Beatitudes, or the Sermon on the Mount, which begins with the Beatitudes. And then and where he talks a lot about the poor, and the meek, and the humble. And then right after that, he goes into these three little lessons on uh, loving, your neighbor, or loving your enemies, judging others, and you will know a tree by its fruit. So you read all of this and it's pretty easy to see that how we treat others is something very important to Jesus. Love for enemies, not judging others. And then he goes on to that whole deal about you'll know a tree by its fruit. In other words, how you treat others, how you put these things into practice is going to show what kind of tree you are. If we want to be seen as disciples of Jesus, if we want people to look at us and look at our fruit 
and see the tree that we are is that we are a disciple of Jesus Christ, then we're going to have to start treating others the way Jesus treated others. Look with me in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 and 7. I, most of you are probably familiar with that, looking at this crowd. But we're going to go ahead and read it anyway. Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 5. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. What was his attitude like? Well, being in very nature God, he did not consider equality with God something to be held on to, but he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. Being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus left heaven to come and dwell amongst all kinds of people, regardless of who they were. And so the questions that I want to ask, I want us to ask ourselves this morning is, what is it that keeps us from associating with all kinds of people in this world around us? What is it that, that keeps us from going out to those who are sick and dirty and the outcasts of society, the rejects of society? And I came up with a couple of those ideas that, that I think are probably some of the reasons uh, that you guys might. See, I don't have any of these problems, okay? The number one is, is fear. We don't, we don't want to go be around the sick because... We might get sick. That's right. And we don't like being sick. And so we don't want to go be around the sick. And also, sometimes we are afraid uh, of being around the outcast and the low lives and the dirty people in the world because we're afraid what would others think if they saw us out with them? What would people say? Now, we don't like to admit that, but I think maybe it's in the back of our minds somewhere. I think another thing is sometimes we have a sense of superiority. We get this attitude of, you know, would you look at that, huh? And how many of you have, have ever, and I know you're not going to raise your hands to admit it, but how many of you have ever, can you believe what that person is? And what we really mean is they should dress more appropriately. And what we really mean by that is they should dress like me. Can you believe that they're behaving that way? And what we really mean is they should, they should behave better. And what we really mean is they should behave like I do. It's his sense of superiority. The other reason I think we don't associate with people the way we should is it offends us. We don't like the smell. I, I'll never forget when, when I was living in Washington. I think I've told you guys before how I, I would leave church during lunch and I would come to, I would stop at the church building on my way to the hospital in the morning and I would start draining the baptistry. And then at my, during my lunch hour, I'd drive down to the church and I'd scrub the battery tree out and rinse it and start it filling back up. And then after work, I'd stop by and shut the water off and so I could clean the baptistry tree in one day. And I never will forget one day I, during my lunch, I come rushing down to the church, fill my foot in the parking lot, and the preacher, Dennis Russell, hey Dennis, if you ever watch this, I, I, I remember this. Dennis is standing outside, and he's got these two guys. One of them was a member of the congregation, the other one wasn't. And both of the guys are standing there like this with their eyes closed, and Dennis has a thing of air freshener. And I mean, he is just dousing. Well, the guy was a member of the congregation. He wasn't homeless, but he looked and he smelled homeless. I mean, when he came in and sat down, you knew it. You didn't even have to turn around. The odor was, it was strong. And he had come down to visit with Dennis that day, and he brought a friend. And they were in an office about the size of my little office back there. 
And after about 10 minutes with the door shut, Dennis says, guys, look, I am sorry, but I can't do this, and we've got to go outside. But you know, you think about it, a lot of times we don't like being around people that stink. We don't like being around people who are dirty, whose clothes are torn and messed up, people who smell like alcohol or vomit, people who are really at rock bottom. It offends us and it makes us uncomfortable. Sometimes the language that people use offends us. And we don't want to be around that kind of language. Sometimes their behavior offends us and we don't want to be around that kind of behavior. We don't like the environment where these people are. Basically, though, I think it really all comes down to a protection of self. Those things bother me, offend me, scare me, and I like being comfortable. And so we protect self, and it's kind of a selfish thing that keeps us from actually going out and being with the people in this world that Jesus spent all of his time with. And yet if we claim to be his disciples, we're supposed to be out there. We, our attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who didn't consider this being God something to be grasped, but he let go of it and he became a man. And we need to let go of our sense of being our own God. And humble ourselves and be among those that need us. And I think this is, this is part of our faith journey that, that we all struggle with. And I don't say that just because I know me and I know you. I say that because almost every book, every letter written to the church in the New Testament, they talk about this, how you treat others. It is vital. It is so important as a Christian. We are known by how we treat others, how we associate with others. In fact, in, in Colossians chapter 3, that's where we're going to be Tonight in Colossians chapter 3 is just a great example of this. And this entire chapter just kind of gives us some, some ideas uh, to remember who we are and the kind of people that we're supposed to be. Paul begins in chapter 3 verse 1 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. Paul, that, that those two little verses, or three, th four little verses there, he just hammers in, guys, you are not yours any longer. You died. You are something new. And what you are now is you are Christ. You are in Christ. You remember, he says, you died. Your focus is different now. Your life is different. <laughs> and that former selfishness that you had, that all must go. Verses 5 through 11. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Sexual, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these, in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourself of all such things, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of its creator. Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. He starts with kind of two lists of sinful behaviors. The first is the sexual immorality and the lust and the greed and all that stuff. And really isn't that all just about me? Me wanting to satisfy my own desires. But then he talks about the, the anger and the rage and the malice and the slander and the filthy language. And isn't that really all about me too? For what is it that causes quarrels amongst you, James says? Because you want something, but you don't get it. It's all about me. 
And so all of these things that cause division and cause problems between us, it all stems from our own selfish desires to be a certain way. And Paul says, guys, you have to put all of that to death. And then he goes on and he talks about uh, how we need now to treat each other the way that Christ treated others. In verses uh, 12 down through verse 17, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Love as Christ loved. Forgive as Christ forgave. Treat others the way Jesus treated others. And then he gives some specific examples. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. <clears throat> Treat your husbands in the way that Christ calls you to treat your husbands. Treat your husbands the way that Christ would treat your husband if he were married to them. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Love your wives the way Jesus would love your wife if he were their husband. Fathers, do not embitter, or excuse me, children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything. And do it not only when their eye is on you to win the fa their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as if working for the Lord, not for men. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for his wrong, and there is no favoritism. Masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair, because you know that you also have a master in heaven. And so our fruit, is how we treat others, is supposed to reveal what kind of tree we are. We claim that the kind of tree we are is we are a Christian meaning a disciple of Jesus Christ. Our fruit is to show that. Flip back to Luke chapter 6, the little third little lesson that Jesus teaches on the Sermon on the Mount. I didn't read it earlier, but I want to go back and read it now. Luke chapter 6, beginning in verse 43. It says, A good tree bears... No good tree, excuse me, no good tree bears bad fruit. Nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. The good man brings forth things out of the good stored up in his heart. And the evil man brings evil out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. So what kind of tree are we? What, is, what are the things that are stored up in us? And, and I will tell you right now, a lot of how we treat other people is based upon things that are stored up in us. Things that we heard growing up about other people. I'll never forget my grandmother once. I, I had a crush on this little girl down the street. And I remember my grandmother telling me, Let you don't want to go out with her. She's nasty. 
I, I, <laughs> that didn't cross my I didn't know what nasty meant at the time. But I'm thinking, she, she bathed every day. Didn't he? What? I don't know what you're talking about. But I, but I come to find out it, it had more to do with where she was from in the country that made her nasty. And there are things that we pick up as kids that are, that are stored up in our hearts. Jesus says, you gotta, Paul tells the church, you've got to put all that stuff to death. We have to have the same attitude as Jesus. Who did Jesus hang out with? Anybody. Anybody who was lost. In church, we have to be the same. <coughs> uh, I caught him off guard. Caught him asleep there. So Jeff's going to lead us in a song. Uh, what is the song tonight? With, it is well with my soul. Uh, maybe after this lesson tonight, you realizing it is not well with your soul. Maybe there are things that you have been holding against people for one reason or another. And you realize, that, you know what? As a Christian, I can't do that. I need to work on some of these things. I need to start treating people the way Jesus would treat them. And if you need to do that, you need us to pray for you and help you in any way tonight, we're going to stand and sing this song. And then you can come down the front and we'll help you. Uh, I do want to mention real quick, uh, you can go and stand up if you want to. Jerry's got our closing prayer, but then after Jerry does the closing prayer, Blake wants to lead a special prayer for that church down in Texas. So after the closing prayer, you can be seated, and then Blake's going to come up and lead a special prayer for that. But if you need to respond in any way tonight, please do so while we sing. <laughs>